couple of reminders to go over. Hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the truck at all times. Those are some of the largest animals here in the forest. They grow to be around 3,000 pounds each. Bongos are also called the ghosts of the forest. That's because they're very rare sights to see in the wild. The horns on their head point backwards. It lets these animals move through the bushes without getting caught up on branches or leaves. The more grayish brown animals just on the other side of this bamboo here, those are greater kudu. They have those massive ears on their heads that can turn to face any direction the animal needs. Helps them to pinpoint where sounds come from. Through the water, and they're also hanging out around a couple of these pink-backed pelican. Absolutely right. Now, these are one of only nine species of pelican left in the world. Now, pelicans are one of the oldest birds, actually dating back around 11 million years. These pink-backed pelican, they have a sort of pinkish color in between their wings during mating season. Uh, this gets a little bit brighter and easier to see that. They'll take it bully bully nice and slowly as we cross, just to be safe. As we do cross this bridge, out on the left-hand side, those are Nile Crocodile down below. Nile Crocodile are among the largest members of the crocodilian species. That's a spotted hyena up there. There's another one laying down just to the left and in front of the den. Hi. Now, hyena aren't exactly the scavengers they've been made out to be by movies. Instead, they're some of the most successful hunters anywhere in the world. They hunt together in packs. Those packs are called matriarchal societies. It's a very fancy name. Basically, it means these animals are led by the females of the group. And you. Comes from the vocalization, the sound they're known for making. Said to be a sort of bleating sound, sort of little more animals. Way back there on the left hand side, you see those gray and tan antelope, they're really big ones. The male actually has a little bit of a flower crown on his head. That's how they're able to attract the mate. Those are Patterson's Eland, the largest antelope you can find out here. They stand six feet tall on their shoulders and weigh about a ton. You'll also find, though, these Maasai giraffe. A giraffe are the tallest land mammals on Earth, growing up to 20 feet tall when fully grown. The largest land mammal on Earth. They have those massive trunks on their face. They're called prehensile trunks. That word means finger-like. That finger-like nature lets them move all over, move, picking grass up off the ground or leaves out of the trees, holding up to five gallons of water at a time inside and spraying it into their mouths to drink or onto their backs to take a shower. That's also thanks to the 40,000 muscles just in their trunks alone. Flamingo species and the lightest of that pink color they're known for. That color comes from their diet, which is mostly made of brine shrimp. It's very rich in beta carotene, and it's that beta carotene that dyes their feathers for them. Now, cheetah are the fastest land mammals on Earth. They can go from a standstill to running 60 miles an hour in less than three seconds. They can't hold that speed forever. They are sprinters. They're not most active at night. They'll be found sleeping for up to 20 hours of their day. That's because during the day, their eyesight's the same as a human's, but at nighttime, it gets to be six times better. You actually see, it looks like the female lioness are laying at the front of the rock formation. We should get a pretty great view of them out there. Now, did anybody back there watch the live-action Lion King movie that came out a couple years ago? Yeah, if you did, that male lion might have looked familiar. That's because that's the exact lion they used to create both Simba and Mufasa in that movie. Oh, really? You can, though, look at any lion and call him Simba. You would always be right. That's because Simba is the Afrikaans word for lion. Now these females, they're going to be the hunters of the group. They're the ones who actually go up and catch all the food, while the males stay back and watch over the young, they're the protectors. That's why they have those huge manes of hair around their head. It makes them look a little bit larger and more intimidating. There's that metal yellow structure over there. Now that is a beehive. One of the most amazing things we learned about the animals out here by studying them right on this very reserve is that elephants are afraid of bees. And we think it might have something to do with the fact that either they have really sensitive hearing, so they don't like that buzzing sound, or because they have sensitive skin, they don't like the feeling of getting stung. 
Now, either way, uh, we learned about a situation that was happening around here. The farmers that were had all of their land were having elephants, oftentimes, trampling over and destroying all of their crops. It wasn't good for the farmers, destroying their only source of income, but it wasn't good for the elephants either. The farmers became very defensive of their land. Let's just say, long story short, it didn't have a very happy ending for the animals. We decided to help out the situation, though, by building fences made of beehives around the farmer's property. It was a great way of uh, being able to protect both the farmer's crops as well as the elephant's lives. Now, on that note, we're heading out of the reserve, and that means our safari is coming to an end. I don't know about everyone back there, but I think we've had an amazing amount of luck finding so many different animals. Really, it's just been so much fun. These past two weeks have flown by more like about 18 minutes and 25 seconds or so. It is incredible what happens when you're having fun.